Good afternoon. So the case we're going to present is a dog named Izzy, who's a nine-year-old Siberian Husky. And Izzy's a performance dog. She's a sled dog, so she competes um, with sled races. And so the owners are pretty keen for her to have full restoration of function. And she did have a uh, TPLO performed on her right leg last year, about a year ago. Recovered well from that, but recently has been lame on her left leg. And obviously the owners brought her in suspecting a left cranial cruise ligament rupture. So on examination, Izzy did have some pain and effusion on left stifle palpation. There was no cranial drawer sign as such, um, but um, given her history, given evidence of, of early cruciate disease, we recommended to proceed with a TPLO. So uh, we'll plan on a stifle arthroscope to confirm the diagnosis, uh, and if we do see partial tearing of the cruciate ligament, we'll proceed with a uh, left TPLO. Okay, so I'm going to measure the tibial plateau angle. So I'm going to draw a line between the intercondylar eminence and the middle of the talus. And then a line from the top of the tibial plateau cranially to the forward aspect of the tibial plateau. And then measure that angle, which is... 30 degrees. So that's how I measure the tibial plateau angle. So Simon, what are the main benefits of a TPLO over an extracapsular repair for cruciate disease, in your opinion? Um, faster return to function, um, more complete return to function preservation of their athletic performance and a much more normal gait. The extra capture yeah, tends to have some degree of external rotation of the of the limb as a result of the suture and relies on scar tissue to form whereas your TPLO they they have a normal limb alignment and you're relying on bone to heal rather than than fibrosis. So their their range of motion and function is much superior. Would you recommend it as the treatment of choice regardless of the size of the dog? Yes, we're doing TPLOs in dogs sort of three to four kilos and above now, so I'd still, for a really tiny dog, still do an extra capsule, mainly because we haven't got plates small enough, but if the smaller size plate is appropriate for the size of the dog, then I would much recommend a TPLO over an extra capsule repair for sure. So how did Izzy's surgery go, Simon? So Izzy's surgery went well. Um, there was a partial tear of the cranial cruciate ligament and the medial meniscus and lateral meniscus were fine. Uh, so we did a TPLO procedure, which basically the rationale for that is to convert cranial tibial thrust into compressive forces across the joint. So if we draw a normal stifle, So if that's the femur, that's the tibia, we have the cranial cruciate ligament in that direction, the caudal cruciate ligament in that direction. Uh, in a stable knee, the cruciate's intact, so there's no uh, movement of the tibia against the femur with weight bearing. But as we get a partial or complete tear, we get cranial instability or tibial thrust. And uh, it's most obvious in complete ruptures of the cruciate ligament. Uh, with partial tears of the cruciate ligament, ligament we'll get a um, stable knee, but there will be a degree of instability which we can't always recognise when we palpate the, the stifle. So the rationale for a, a TBLO procedure is basically to convert these forces into compressive forces across the stifle. And how we do that is level the tibial plateau. So this is the tibial plateau. In most dogs, the angle's around sort of 25 to 30 degrees, something like that. Um, and that is this angle here um, compared to the long axis of the uh, tibia. Um, with a TBLO procedure, we perform a curved osteotomy of the bone 
and rotate that section of bone uh, to bring that angle down to about sort of five to six degrees. And so we, by predetermined amounts, rotate that uh, tibial plateau to get this down here um, and the tibial plateau at the back goes up to there. And so we end up with a a leveled tibial plateau. So the angle now is at approximately five degrees and that converts those thrusting forces into compressive forces. Obviously we need to stabilise the osteotomy and we uh, use a bone plate and screws to, to stabilise the osteotomy. So uh, depending on the dog's size, we use different size plates which vary from dogs down to sort of three or four kilos up to 80, 90 kilo dogs. So we have a range of plates that we can use uh, to stabilise that osteotomy in the level position and that converts these forces into uh, compressive forces. If they've got a complete rupture of the cruciate ligament, it's now stable. It, with weight bearing, we can still elicit cranial draw because there's nothing to stop that passive movement. But in a functional weight bearing position with muscle contraction, the, the stifle is stable. We don't have cranial tibial thrust. Uh, with a partial tear, the TPLO procedure actually um, protects the, the remaining cranial cruciate ligament and, and prevents it from degenerating further or tearing further and actually allows some healing process within that cranial cruciate ligament. So that's the rationale of the procedure. So if we look on a bone model, we still have a post TPLO, we still have a cranial drawer sign but we don't have tibial thrust because of the level tibial plateau. And that's an example of the, the plate and screws that's placed uh, across the osteotomy site to stabilize the proximal tibia in a level position. So this is the post-op radiographs following the TPLO. So you can see the curved osteotomy um, and the plate and screws stabilizing the proximal fragment. Uh, we now have a level tibial plateau angle. So um, basically the ob objective is that we level a tibial plateau such that uh, we eliminate tibial thrust. Um, and so it's gone from about 34 degrees uh, preoperatively to around about sort of five or six degrees postoperatively. So if we do the tibial plateau angle now, it's now sort of around about sort of six degrees, so it's leveled. So that's the objective of the TPLO. Uh, and on the other view, you can see the, uh, actually you can't see it there, let me just show you. See the osteotomy here uh, and the plate and screws on the medial aspect of the tibia. Um, she's happy, she's bright, she's comfortable. She's not using the leg perfectly as of yet, but that's to be expected this early postoperatively. So we think she's going to do a bit better at home with some physiotherapy, with some, some rest, and um, we'll get her back in a couple of weeks and see how she's doing. So what do you recommend to the clients in terms of doing physio after a CPLO? Uh, so what we're going to do is initially we're just going to rec recommend um, adequate confinement uh, and rest for the first couple of weeks just to allow any post-operative swelling and uh, any pain to subside first and foremost. Uh, and then we typically recommend some flexion and extension exercises, uh, some range of motion activities, anything that will really encourage her to start trying to use the limb as, uh, as quickly as possible and to, to assist in returning her limb to appropriate function. Uh, so we'll start incorporating those once she feels a bit more comfortable and once the kind of swelling goes down a little bit. But she's doing really, hot, she's doing really well, um, happy, comfortable. So yeah, we'll send her home today and, and see her back pretty soon. Ready to go, sweetheart? Come on. Yeah. This way.